Yo guys, Post 900 here. Today we are going to be starting Katala Shoujo. Start. I played some of this. Um, actually, fairly good. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couple for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in, the, in this cold. Just how long am I expected to, walk, to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4pm. Ah yes, the note, slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in the stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time is slow to a crawl. The wrestling of snow a dry snow un underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet move. Someone is approaching me from behind. Hit his sound. You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I'm listening to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper in a conversation. I turn to face the voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Iwanako? I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it, I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line and that was the result? Pathetic. Um, yes, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. I just had to do it. My heart is pounding now, as if it was trying to burst out from my chest and claim the girl for, for this girl for herself. Frisky heart there, I wonder what it's thinking. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the, world, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Imanako flinches ever so slightly against the gust of wind. As it pass, passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine as she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You, you see, I wanted to know if you'd go out with me. I stand there, motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something to, in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've stretched beyond a breaking, a breaking point. Just out! I, I think I just messed her voice up. Wow. I reach out to try to massage my throat. This only yet sends spines of blinding pain along my arms. Hassel! My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Done. Done. Hassel! The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, it would not go running towards me, all these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sound of a Iwa Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of branches above. Okay. Dun dun dun. Fading text. Hey! We're live. Four Leaves Studios presents Katawa Shoujo. A 
Fighting, Kaga. I, I can't. I can't get all the. I can't get all that in one go. Oh my god! Medical supplies. They scared me. Hospitals scare me. I guess they're not really that scary. It's just I. I hate needles, honestly. Like how to get. Well, I, I. I'm not gonna go into a story, but just overall, I hate needles. The. Tick tock, 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 tick when you're left alone with your thoughts, so I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word, a foreign alien one, one that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition, it causes the heart to act radically and occasionally beat, up, beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They pra they practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell their house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from my treat from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if it I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all I, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending them, sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Yeah, that's what usually happens, honestly. Maybe some people were generally concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgery worked. So, I oddly observed the scar that the surgeries have left in my chest slowly, slowly change its appearance over time, thinking, thinking of it as some kind of omen, of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why. I just did. Maybe it's the wrong kind of e escapism. God, I can't read escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There's a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I had to go back for more. I have to say, uh, honestly, I would get bored of reading. I mean, I love reading, don't get me wrong, but I'd have to have some sort of variety. I mean, not in books, I mean variety, like in activities. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. That's a problem. But I love the stories. That was about, that was what my life was like. The days became increasingly hard to distinguish from each other differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some 
kind of gooey mess I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause to real in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely. And I couldn't even cry. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been... <sighs> Guys, I... My back is itching. Oh my gosh. <sighs> sorry about that. Okay, sorry. I, I really do apologize. Whew. Wow. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hassel. How are you doing today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions you should be fine. We have all your medication sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad. His expression turns wooded as he reads it here quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I, su how am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contra... contradiction... What? Contradiction... That, that's not the word, I can't read it. <laughs> and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this, for the rest of my life, every day? I'm afraid that's the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, calm down, Hassel. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knows full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we've, we're sure that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the, cam on the campus. I think think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give, give students a degree of independence, but keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. Yeah, really don't. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Yeah, it's not really a selling point. Um, sorry, I wouldn't want to be at a school that's just a few months away from a hospital. Sorry, it... Sorry. <laughs> of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you liked it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, Peter, people with your condition, <laughs> people, I, I don't even know, usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This is a, an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one, 
a special school. That's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students that are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right. And many of the graduation graduates of this school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues is in another hospital as a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I'd always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame the lack of my reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something about how I could go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is I know how now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that can make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get through this. At least I still have something even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start and my life isn't over. It it would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. It really is. I mean, even if you don't, I mean, even if you do have to start over or, or you have to do something that you don't want to do, like doing that for instance, it is a new start. It's a new slate. People don't know him. He has a new chance. Just, there are some upsides to it. At the very least, I'll try to see what my li new life will look like. Act 1, Life Expectancy. The gate looked far too prosperous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black quilt, iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. Welcoming at all. I wonder if I wonder if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that, brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there is supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park, more like a park, with a clean whole walkway, going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. World, words like clean and hypergenic. Hygienic. Hypergenic. Ay, ay, ay. Hygienic pop into my mind and makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. I actually kind of like the background. The scenery of this looks fairly nice. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish that there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The, tree, the trees hum with the wind and the green trees flash all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. How they are that... Yeah, how they are that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious, despite all this greenery? I didn't really think of greening green being a calming color. I thought that was blue. Yeah, da da da. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building. I don't really get that word. Haughty main building. I surprised myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. I guess haughty is a mean another word for big, kinda, or looming. 
It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Really nervous and with this realization set in my mind, I opened the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter, or the only people in the hall in the lobby, so it's only logical. You must be Ninaki? No, wait, I just said I just said that wrong. Ni na Niki. Nakai. Yeah, <laughs> so you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Matau. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither far, firm nor sloppy, and he, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asks you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's in eh, inevitable. I don't know why I'm having trouble in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel a little nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Yeah, I do. Yeah, sure, I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 33. I'm sorry, but that is such a tongue twister for God. Mattel opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. Again? So he's late again. He, he, he's been late before to his own class. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. I'm sorry, but hold- wait! How, I don't know why he keeps get- uh, Never mind, just, just forget I'm saying anything, just ignore me. Ah, oh, get a grip. This is a big step. Is a big step. I knew- I know that. But there isn't any point in worrying so much about it, at least not like- not this soon. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious, the ceiling is unusually high, and there's a lot of space left over around and in between the desks. The entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a sh shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames, simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school, but then, why would they be here? Good question. There's probably, they're probably like me and have something wrong with them, only it's not just the immediate obvious. Then I realize that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb on her right hand. That's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone, someone's talking to you, I do not the teacher speaks halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if, as if it will make her invisible. There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of, rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the lens of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery-looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her at the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. She classes hands and so does everyone else, except one girl on the first row who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing and bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hesau Nakai. And after that, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I have to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. True that. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Poor guy. 
Everyone seems to be satisfied even with what little I said, though a few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels a little weird to do. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandage stump. It makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that will give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamishi. She is a class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know, and who else would be able to do that better, right? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamishi is. Slow, the teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Hakamishi is right here. She's an A. Hakamishi. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the window. Hey, I guess you're Hakamishi, right? It's nice to meet you. Ha 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 ha! What? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you too, but... I'm not Hakamishi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamishi. Shichan. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me this whole time. She not once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully neatly brushed hair, a pair of oval shaped glasses balanced on the tip of her dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seems to alternate every few seconds between it. And analytical and slightly bold. It's nice to meet you. She immediately looks at Misha. She smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamishi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little... I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think I was Shichan. I don't know if I can ever get her voice down. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for, back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you, too. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? Bubbly you are. He seems like a very interesting person, didn't he? Doesn't he? We know there is going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today. So soon, Hichon, right? Hichon? Yep, it fits, don't it? Doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look like I imagined. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, you look like a Heechan. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hakamishi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. Ha ha ha. Er, sorry about that. Heechan wants. Wants you to know that she's the class rep. So if there, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like this school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the handwork of it, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks. That'd be very, that'd be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kind of came straight to class today. Ha 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 ha. That's not good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going to, before you're going, before you go there. Not just with school, either. Anyways. Oh, uh, always. Jeez. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shichan. Ha ha ha. 
learn about where you're going. I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half acidly. But anyway, hmm, <laughs> yeah, the point. I don't say anything, and maybe should sign something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over my feet. Both of them are smelling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. You look down. You look down. Are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just felt attached. <laughs> Alright. Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamishi or Clash Rap all the time. Just call her Shichan. Hmm. <laughs> Ha ha ha. Okay, maybe that's too casual. Okay, she's an A would be more appropriate. Yep, yep. She's an A is fine. Heh. <laughs> okay. That would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about she's an A, who I assume would be all business. Well, she still seems like that. Just less so, I guess. Huh? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start at work now or her. she Chan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. Wahahaha, ha, ha, ha. that too! She's an eight glitters with the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, 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 I get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very, cha very challenging to get through, com combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long. Still, we finished it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is so, as, as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. <laughs> To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. The clock tower bells ring, sig signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby, where I met Mattel, down to the bottom floor. Just like every thing in the school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria! Her enthusiasm statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care so we proceed to the line. There's a rather long list of menu options, which always seems great until I realize that many which seems great, until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice, it almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions measured with scientific precision to make familiar the needs of the patients, to meet the needs of the patients. I picked something at random and saw the and A to a table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and poke and voice the and A. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks who is proper and polite. Do you want to know something? What? About anything. Or your guys so we so you should ask if the ask us hey, ask if there is something. Hmm, I wonder. Uh library. Oh yeah, is there a library in the classroom? Late in the school. Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I like to check it out. Misha gives a kind of frown that makes me that makes it clear that she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smell again. There it is! It's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. Thanks. I return to my food while she the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Susan they sign back and forth very intimately, throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they were talking about the secret girl stuff or something. I quickly notice the conversation and sign is not enough to fill a silence. We arrived in the classroom early, but we're not the first. 
The dark hair girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk in the first row. Hello. She yawns a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegant elegance of Reno. Of a Reno of a Rhino. God, I can't just I can't. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from my presence. Misha and Susan A either didn't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. Converse? I think. <laughs> I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. Strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me feel like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Aww. Poor us. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Season A are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay in- oh yeah, unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today. Keyshawn, we've got to hurry already since there is a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Ah, wait, the teacher said I'd have to go to- I have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside. I, nah, outside with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. So I really have to say I don't know who's cuter, Misha or Season Eight. I mean, they're both pretty adorable. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school, built in the same style. So it looks like he, it's actually a part of the main building. This is the uh, auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? Don't be silly, Ichan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is in the first floor. It's all the first floor. We'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. Okay guys, so I'm actually going to end the episode here. I've had a lot of fun doing this so far. But... You know, I'm just... I, yeah, just, I'm going to end the episode here. I think it's a good stopping point. You know, we're at the nurse's offices, and nurse's office, and we're going to... You know, hopefully find the head nurse or whatever and talk to them and have all that lovely stuff. So anyway, guys, I hope you're enjoying. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think. I'm sorry my voice acting isn't the best. I'm not the best at it, but I'm trying. Hopefully I can improve on this. So anyway, guys, I will catch all of you later. See ya.